Recorded live in Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. Legends Fest 2002. The night that left the whole world talking. Enjoy this premiere video from USA Championship Wrestling. You know, a lot of people go through life and they think about things they should have done. Things that were left unsaid. Affairs that were in a tangled mess. One of the things that has been left undone in our industry is Jerry the King Lawler and the American Dream, Dusty Rose, in public, if you will. Opportunity knocked on my door. Opportunity knocked on Lawler's door in his fancy crown. Every Monday night, going out throughout the world, being the king, if you will. The king does not make a dream. Dreams do come true. One week from tonight, Nashville Fairground Sports Arena, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes continues his legendary tour against, yes, that business left undone, that business left untalked about, that business of Jerry the King Lawler having no place to run and no place to hide, facing reality, dodging for so many years the American dream. Oh, catch me a little bit older, yes. Maybe a little bit slower. But it all still works. When it's all over, I'm on party down at Tootsies. I'm inviting Garth Brooks, Elvis Presley, whoever the hell lives in Nashville now. Because it's going to be one of them nights to remember, something that people thought they wouldn't be able to see. I'm going to fix your feet where you can't walk, jack your jaw where you can't talk. And Dusty Rose, the American Dream, funky like a monkey in Nashville. One week from tonight, destiny knocks on your door. Lala, don't bring any of your Monday night stuff with you. You know what I mean? Because I'll put it where the sun don't shine. You know, I like to tell all the, all the wrestling fans in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, a little bit about the history between the king and the great American dream. Because there is a lot of history there. And you know, it seems like there's a lot of historical matches taking place lately. I mean, there's Icon going against Icon all over the place. I mean, Hulk Hogan against The Rock. Hulk Hogan coming back after all of these years and winning the, the uh, WWE Championship. And now, now we got another chance to make history. We got another chance to see Icon against Icon, if that's what you like to refer to yourself as, American Dream. See, I don't, I don't really uh, put myself in the icon category. I'm just the king. And suffice to say, that's been good enough for me for a number of years. But as I said, we do go back a ways. Right now, I'm in, uh, I'm in my upstairs office in my home in Memphis, Tennessee. And I want to bring your attention to this little uh, poster that's been on my wall for years and years and years. It says right here, the great American bashers. Back in the mid-'80s, there was this big tour going around the country called the Great American Bash. It featured guys like Terry Taylor, the Road Warriors, Magnum T.A., Handsome Jimmy Vant, the Rock and Roll Express, the Fabulous Ones, Superstar Bill Dundee, Tommy Rich, Austin Idol, Ric Flair, the King, and there he is right there. The Mac and Dream, Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> yeah, Dream. Now, I understand that you like to talk about, uh, well, your version of the facts. You like to say that throughout my career and your career, the king avoided the American dream. That I was somehow, for some reason, afraid or always uh, found it convenient not to be in the same ring with you. And I think you even said that... Uh, when the Great American Bash came along, you and I wound up as partners, but never opponents. Well, you know, part of that is true. 
I have never wrestled. The king has never been in the ring against the American dream. Yeah, we were partners one time at the Great American Bash. But um, the other part about me being afraid of you, or the other part about me avoiding you, that's where uh, I think the facts get a little fuzzy. Now, if you want to talk about facts, Dusty, we can talk about facts. I mean, the fact of the matter is, you know, Memphis, Nashville, you know, we were all part of a, a territory. And Dusty, you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking territories. You know, we were part of a territory that uh, uh, Nick Goulas and Roy Welch, I mean, blazed the trails, and then Jerry Jarrett came along, and I came along, and, and we had a very, very successful company. We had big stars. I mean, we started some careers here. We started some teams like the Fabulous Ones, the Rock and Roll Express. We started and had some big names going here, as is witnessed by this, uh, this little poster right here. But then you know what happened? You remember what happened, Dream? Do you remember the truth? All of a sudden, the big WCW, boy, they wanted to take over the world. They, wanted, they were on cable. They were on Turner. They were on WTBS. So the American Dream and Nature Boy Ric Flair, you guys were going to go all over the country. And you were going to stomp out little territories like Memphis and Nashville. And oh, <laughs> you were going to be real slick about it. You were going to first go in and uh, you were going to be partners with the guys. You were going to get your talent all well known and well established by, by being partners with guys like me and Bill Dundee and Tommy Rich who are from Tennessee. And then your plan was to come back in and promote big, huge shows without us. Do you remember that, Dusty? I remember it. I remember when you and all your crew were at the Liberty Bowl there in Memphis, Tennessee, the big 65,000 seat stadium, and you guys were waiting for all the Memphis fans to come pouring in. But was the king booked on your show? No. Superstar Dundee, Tommy Rich, the fabulous ones, the Rock and Roll Express, oh no. It was Slick Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, American Dream, and all the WCW talent. And you were going to stomp us right out of business. But it didn't work that way, did it? Because you see, I'm going to tell you people, I'm going to let you in on a little inside secret that hadn't been known for years, but Dusty knows it. Because it's stuck in his craw for a long, long time. When they came to Memphis with their big show, and their high ticket prices at the Liberty Bowl, well, the king... Superstar, Tommy Rich, Rock and Roll Express, we all went right next door to Chick Stadium, big baseball stadium. You know what we did? We put on free wrestling. We gave our matches away to make sure that Dusty Rhodes and WCW didn't get a foothold in our city. And brother, let me tell you, Dusty, you know how mad that made you, didn't you? You know how hot you were. You had to grab the microphone in the Liberty Bowl and you had to run my name through the mud as best you could for what few fans were there for you. And you guys took a big bath and you didn't come back to Memphis anymore. And that, Dusty, is why you and I haven't wrestled. But now, all of the history is coming together. All of this is coming to a head. Next week, next Saturday night, in Nashville, Tennessee, the icon, the American dream, is going to finally get a chance to settle a score. Something that's been eating at him for years and years, since the mid-80s, ladies and gentlemen. Dusty Rhodes has wanted to get a piece of the king. Well, next week, Dusty, your dream comes true. But I promise you this. I've been wanting a piece of the dream just as long as you've been wanting me. I've been wanting to get my hands on you and settle the score just as bad as you've been wanting me. And it's going to finally happen next Saturday night, Nashville, Tennessee, right out there at the fairgrounds where I have been many, many times. And Dust, it's going to be your first appearance there. The first time the American Dream steps into the fairgrounds arena in Nashville, Tennessee. And it's going to be against the King. A long-awaited match. And it's going to finally happen. You dreamed about it. You dreamed about it, Dusty, the American dream. Well, I promise you this, and I'm promising all in Nashville, the king next Saturday night is going to make your dream turn into a nightmare.
two of the biggest stars in the history of wrestling collide Saturday night, June 1st, only at the Tennessee State Fairgrounds. Promoters said the match couldn't be signed. Never before have they even been in the same ring. Jerry the King Lawler against the American Dream. Dusty Rhodes, one night only. Nashville, Tennessee, Saturday, June 1st at the fairgrounds. You'll also see Brian Christopher take on Buff Bagwell. Ten big matches only at the fairgrounds. Lawler against Rhodes, June 1st. You've had an opportunity to listen to my verbiage. You've had an opportunity probably to go ahead as we talked last week about June the 1st, as we talked about what's going to happen when this unsaid, unwritten, undodgeable, that's the roadism, of being a curve tonight. Nashville, Tennessee. The Fairgrounds Sports Arena. The American Dream Dusty Rhodes, Jerry Lawler, for the first time in the history of Lawler's makeup. You know, they say, dream wherever you go. There's a lot of people that say, well, we love the American dream no matter what he says. Well, let me tell you something about Tennessee. Tennessee is not one of my favorite places. Although Jerry the King Lawler made his career there regionally, as I went on and captured the stars. And then somebody said, well, he can do some announcing. Let's put him nationwide. As I went on and captured the stars. Before it was fashionable, Lola, to stand in Madison Square Garden with the yellow barricades out front and the police on horseback saying, it's sold out. The dream was there with superstar Billy Graham. You was not. You was in Memphis, Tennessee, claiming to be the king. You was in Memphis, Tennessee, dodging the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. And when I did come to Memphis, it was always, hey, dream, why don't me and you team up? And then one day he said, well, now he's older. I can probably whip his ass now. <laughs> yeah, that, that could happen. You know what I'm saying, Jack? Tonight, opportunity for that to happen will shine on you. But don't make a mistake. The bionic elbow still works. Tennessee not being one of my favorite places. I expect to hear maybe one or two boos. You know what I'm saying? That's all right. That would just drive me into whipping your ass tonight at the sports arena in Nashville, Tennessee. Joni, this is it. Tonight is the night. It's all coming together. People are talking about it all over Nashville. They're saying icon versus icon. I, I prefer to call it, you know, icon against the king. I mean, it's me and Dusty Rhodes. Exactly. It's Dusty Rhodes. Big Dusty Rhodes. Yeah? Jerry, he has that, you know, the elbow oh, thing. Oh, the bionic elbow. Yes. Dusty Rhodes. I realize it's Dusty Rhodes. What, what, I mean, so what? Dusty Rhodes, but, uh, Bionic Elbow. Yeah, he beat Slick Ric Flair a lot of times. Yes, see, celebrities. Jerry, he has the best interviews in the business, hands down. Joni, give me a break. I mean, it's like... Charisma. Yeah. He's, yes, Dusty. You're obviously a big Dust fan. American Dream. Yeah, he could talk. He could talk. I mean, he could talk with the best of them. He may be the best. But you know what, Joni? You don't win matches with your mouth. Sure, you talk the people into the arena. And that's what Dusty Rhodes has done for years. He was great at it, none better. I mean, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, the plumber's son, all of that garbage. He spouts it out, and the people come to see him. And then what does he do? Win? Oh, he has won. But he will not win. Not tonight. Not in Nashville. Not in Tennessee. Not in my town. You the promise? American dream will not win. I do, I promise. Do you promise me? Oh, I'm going to do more than promise you. I tell you what, this has been brewing for so long. You know, I told everybody last week about our history. And Dusty Rhodes, he's got a little bit of confusion going on in that fat head of his about what the real facts are. True, Dust. You're a big name. You're a legend. You're an icon. I'll give you that. And everybody in Nashville will admit that's the truth. But what is not the truth 
is what you're saying, the reason this match has come about. You're saying that for years the king has avoided you, the king has run from you, and you know, in your heart, Dusty, that might as well be your rear end talking because your brain knows better. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The truth is going to come out tonight. They're going to see in Nashville that ain't nobody scared of Dusty Rhodes, especially not the king. And the truth of the matter is, the only reason, Dusty, that you want this match is because years ago, back in the mid-80s, during the Great American Bash, you came to Memphis, Tennessee, you came to my hometown, and you tried to put the king out of business. You know you did. You went to the big Liberty Bowl Stadium with all your WCW, Ted Turner, WTBS superstars, and you were going to put 50,000 people into that stadium. But on the very same night, the king, Bill Dundee, Tommy Ridge, the Rock and Roll Express, the fabulous ones, we went right next door to the baseball stadium and we put on free wrestling. And we had to turn people away. We had so many fans that they couldn't all get into that stadium. And you had a handful of die-hard American Dream fans and you took a bath. You had to go home to Ted Turner and say, you know what, the king outsmarted us. And that stuck in your craw for all these years. And that's why this match is taking place tonight, isn't it, Dusty Rhodes? That's the truth. That's why the dream wants some of the king. Well, brother, you got it. You got me tonight right here in Nashville, Tennessee, out at the Fairgrounds Arena. And I want all of Nashville to witness this. Because believe me, the word is going to go out, not just all over Nashville, not just all over Tennessee, not just all over the United States, but all over the world. The dream and the king Get it on tonight. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to finish this just like I finished it last week. I'm going to finish you tonight, American Dream. And I'm going to finish this by saying your dream of getting the king is going to become a nightmare tonight. Scott Hudson and Jim Cornette ringside. USA Wrestling here in Nashville, Tennessee. Six-man tag team action. The Hot Shots and the Spellbinder taking on Corey Williams, Hot Rod Biggs, and the Disco Inferno. And Biggs right now in the ring with Hot, or is it Shot? I'm not sure which. Does Actually, it matter? It's Chase. Well, it's Stevens. Chase. Well, he's going to get Chase, chased right out of the building. By Hot Rod Biggs? Well, I don't know if Hot Rod's running too fast these days. But... Ooh! Ooh! Boy, that poor ring. Biggs. Step over, duck the clothesline. Chase Stevens took another shoulder block. Hot Rod Big step over, crisscross. He's going to need oxygen. Hip toss from Chase Stevens. Drop kick from one half of the hot shots. Make it Whoa. two. Hot Rod Big's not feeling so hot right now. Into an arm bar, arm ring, a wrist lock. I'll rake into the eye by Hot Rod Big's quick tag to Corey Williams. Biggs has been on a heck of a weight loss program lately. Who did he lose? Well, as a matter of fact, he lost three members of his family but his size remains unchanged. And you must mention Athena is in the corner of Biggs, Disco, and Corey, and that makes everything all right. I was, I was tempted to ask Athena to join us at the commentator's position, but I realized that would be... Well, thank God you didn't, because she wouldn't have, and then she never would have. If I ask her, she'll be here. As a matter of fact, maybe she can take your chair in the next match. I'll tell you what, if you bring that sentence in for a fitting, I'll have it shortened by Thursday. The Spellbinder. What a specimen this competitor is, taking on Corey Williams. Well, Corey Williams right now is going to climb the tall tree that is the Spellbinder and figure out some way to fell this redwood. He's going to chop him down. He'll ax him. Ax him what? He'll ax him anything he needs to know. Oh, boy. And once again, Athena remains at ringside. Side headlock by the massive Spellbinder. And Spellbinder looks every every ounce of 325 rock solid muscle the guy is just massive look well, at the guy, size of the arms on this guy a guy this powerful can make a side headlock a submission hole true and Corey williams is gonna have to to get out of that sooner than later a lot of people they wouldn't take a headlock as being very devastating but look at the size of spellbinder's arms and now he shows his mobility leap a nice leapfrog by Corey williams into the ropes can Corey hang on no spellbinder grabbed the ropes but look at Corey. Hot chocolate. Oh! oh! 
Lateral press out of the clothesline, count of two and almost a count of three, and Corey Williams, hot chocolate himself. Front face, front chancery now wide open for Cassidy Riley. And I'll tell you, Riley and uh, Chase have made an excellent choice here of partners because the one thing they lack in most of their matches is size. And now they've got that in their corner with Spellbinder. So we, oh wait a minute, Williams backing up. Oh. Made an unfortunate mistake, split the wishbone. He who? He split the wishbone. And now, I think he, he might have bruised his taint. His where? Wait you a minute. heard me. I'm sure we can't say that on television. Disco Inferno now makes the reluctant tag to come in, and Disco Inferno, the veteran of this contest, have a feeling he's going to want to play with the hot shots, see what they know, see how much they've learned. Or see how far he can. Uh oh, look at that. Cassidy Raleigh, a little disco of his own. Well, that's very, uh, that's very rude. Oh, look at that little. Nice handshake. Disrespectful. Oh, right into the eyes. Disco making it look easy against Cassidy Riley. Oh, right hands from D.I. Now boots into the chest, into the midsection of Cassidy Riley and Disco Inferno opening up on one half of the hot shots. Well, Disco Inferno already showing that he's not just another pretty face. He likes to dance and he likes to have fun, but he can mix it up. And that's what that's what will fool you about Disco Inferno. Don't judge the book by its color. Oh, oh my man. gosh. He dropped, kicked him in the nose. How could he miss? Takes Disco, shoots him across into the turnbuckle. Cassidy Riley hands oh. right back elbow into the corner. Boy, I tell you, he hand sprung about three quarters of the way across the ring there. What the hot football. shots, whoa! That was a shot that missed. Veteran maneuver, Disco held on for dear life, and Cassidy Riley missed with a drop kick, and now Disco putting the point of the boot into the ribs, now just choking the life out of Cassidy Riley. Referee Kurt Herring getting in to break it up. See, you don't see Disco Inferno flying all around the ring like that, jumping up and down, because he's a veteran. He knows that sooner or later it's going to cost you, and that's exactly what happened to Mr. Hotshot. Cassidy Riley into the ropes, hot rod Biggs, now the legal man. Oh, oh what a close line. There's the tag to Chase Stevens, and Chase coming in. Little double team action from the hot shots. Drop toe hold and a leg drop. And the hot shots really laying it on. Oh, wait a minute. What is this, a handicap match? For heaven's sake, both the hot shots all over Biggs? I can't believe you would use the word handicap in a wrestling commentary. I'm trying to be politically correct. Now, wait a minute. Oh. Ah, oh, the hot shot, he hit those ropes too hard. That's what it was. It wasn't a knee in the back by Corey Williams. Oh, sure. Oh, that's a fist in the face by Corey Williams to go along with the knee in the back earlier on. Meanwhile, Athena not having to be involved in this one as of yet. Well, the hot shots cheated first. They hit uh, Biggs below the waistline, or was it the coastline? I'm not quite sure. Well, below, it's impossible to find anything below his waistline. It's not what you, not what your wife said, but side Russian leg sweep from Disco Inferno. And see, he's not even Russian. Who? So that blows your whole theory. Disco Inferno. He's Czechoslovakian. Well, that's a former territory of the Soviet Union. Into the ropes goes Disco Inferno. Going for the People's uh, Disco. Oh! Drop the elbow after a moment's hesitation. Lateral presses that in, and Cassidy Raleigh breaks it up for the hot shots. Now, why don't why don't the people like it when Disco does it? Does what? The, the disco elbow. There's just something about it that you don't like. Oh, look at this. Series of kicks. Oh, oh man, spinning boy. heel kick. Leveled I Chase don't think, Stevens. I don't think that was Stevens' chewing gum that flew out of his mouth. Oh. I think it was his teeth. The old Birmingham jam right across the mush, and Cassidy Riley breaks up a surefire three count, saving Chase Stevens. But Chase Stevens has been cut off from the pack. They have isolated him in their half of the ring. And now, oh my God, Stevens all the way over the top, down to the concrete floor, and he Watch barely, this. Wait oh. a minute. Disco, Disco and Hot Rod Biggs double teaming Chase Stevens into the post, and now Hot Rod Biggs. There is little, if any chance, Stevens is going to make it back into the ring. Oh. There's Athena with a slap. I wish she'd spank me like that, oh, but nevertheless. Come on. Oh, he was thrown over the top rope, 10 feet to the floor, run into the steel ring post, slapped by Athena. This guy is done. Jay Stevens all but out in the center of the ring, and Corey Williams, this looks easy. No, the Spellbinder comes in to break it up. That saved a three count because Jay wow. Stevens, that's been a three-on-one situation. That wasn't a save. That was just prolonging the agony. And listen to these people now. He's, Stevens has taken such a beating, even the people in Nashville, these hard-hearted rednecks, they feel bad for him. Oh, collision there, head to head. I heard the, the sound of, of two melons thunking together. 
That was my wife. I'll thank you to leave her out of it. Corey Williams. Why should I be different than any other guy? Jay Stevens. Who's up first? There's the tag to Disco Inferno. And there is the uh -oh. tag to the Spellbinder. And off we go. Down goes Disco Inferno. Spellbinder drops Disco again. Hot Rod Biggs fought one right in the jaw. Now Spellbinder shoots Disco across, ducks the clothesline. Disco, cross body. No way, no how. This guy's like a tree. Ooh. Oh, wait a minute, watch Biggs. Oh, Biggs hot right Biggs. across the back of the head. Broke up the three count on Disco, and oh, it's breaking loose in Nashville, Tennessee. All six men involved here. Referee Kurt Heron losing control. Williams just kicked Spellbinder to the floor. Now Williams and Biggs going out there on the floor with Spellbinder, the big man, is neutralized. Inside Disco putting knots on a hot shot's head faster than they can rub him. Cassidy Riley to the ropes, ducks a close line of Disco Inferno. Up the oh, and comic drop inverted now sets him up. Cassidy takes Disco up top. Michinoku driver, Chase Stevens from on top. Watch Corey Williams. Whoa! Well, that'll give him second thoughts. Now Williams pulling up. I can't even see. Is that Stevens outside? Yes, it is. Riley in the ring. I'll try again. That's Chase Stevens in the ring. Oh, hell. Disco Inferno and Corey Williams. Stevens ducked the clothesline. He ducked Disco's clothesline. Disco ducked his, doubles him up. Disco with the last dance attempt, though. No. Spellbinder across the top rope. Cassidy Raleigh, frog splash. Is that it? It's over. Holy mackerel. That looked like an open air pinball game. What teamwork displayed by the Hot Shots and the Spellbinder. It was the five star, making a six star frog splash from Cassidy Riley and wiped out and killed Disco. Thank you. The Hot Shots and the Spellbinder win the six man extravaganza. I'm Joey Styles. Vince McMahon and the WWF don't want you to know what I know. I have secret sources inside the WWF locker room and inside the WWF offices. I have all the news that you're not supposed to know. Plus, all the news on your favorite local wrestling promotions. Call the number on your screen now. Scott Hudson and Jim Cornette at the Mecca in Nashville, Tennessee. Me, Inc., Mike Rapata, and Big Bully Douglas taking on Sudden Impact and Satan's cheerleader herself, the beautiful Sin, at ringside with Me, Inc. What's up with that? Well, I'll tell you, Me, Inc. has, uh, has decided to dress things up a little bit. Wait a minute. Instead of Brother Ernest ugly in the place up, they've got Sin, who's obviously going to use that leather whip to her advantage and the advantage of her men. And, uh, you know, I admire that in a woman. You should. <laughs> Big Billy Douglas and Mike Rapata are gonna eat these guys up just like uh, yesterday's leftovers. Single leg roll up. Chris Gatlin only got a two count on Big Billy What Douglas. I wanna know is what is Shane Eaton doing over there in the corner of, uh, of Sudden Impact? What He's a, messing in Rapata's business again. What a power slam from Big Billy Douglas. Do you mean the dynamic dude himself, Shane Eaton? Well, he came rolling down here on a roller skate. That was, was a skateboard, oh, thank you whatever, very much. roller skate, skateboard. They ought to put some wheels on him and ship him out. That's what they ought to do with him. Run him into a wall somewhere. That's, that's, that's a great look for a wrestler, you know, to come out with a skateboard and kind of a surfer. Well, it's never been done look. before, so. It's never been done right. Right now, Rapata doing that body slam right. And of course, Satan's cheerleader, Sin, loving every step of it, bitch Hazel herself. Wait a minute, Rapata. What did you call her? It's what she calls herself. She makes the Horror of Babylon look like Pollyanna. Good night. I'm sure the bleep guy is getting a big workout. Into the ropes goes Mike Rapata. Sudden impact, double hip toss on Rapata. Double elbow drop from Gatlin and Lane. Lateral press hooked the leg and only a two count. Sudden impact trying to make an impact here in USA Wrestling. And Rapata trying to escape. Wait a minute. Oh, Sin just, just raked his eyes there. Did you see that? Of course. Sin raked up. Of Gatlin's eyes. I'm sorry, Lane's eyes. She's got five inch nails out there. What do these guys have to dress alike? Wait a minute. My eyes aren't what they used to be. That was what you said was. Now, wait a minute. Didn't you? Oh, sidewalk slam from Mike Rapata. And, and now Rapata, who's thinking about him? He's always thinking about him. Now, sometimes he's thinking about me. What does he think about you? No, he only thinks about me when it's him. Now, you got That's me first. What second? Never mind. We'll talk about that later. 
Wait a minute. Whoa. Sudden impact suddenly to the floor over the top. Steve Lane over the top. Rapata dropped the top and over the top to the floor went Steve Lane. And now Lane bounced off that apron. His head, oh look, Rapata doing a Congo dance oh. with Steve Lane's head right down the apron of the ring and into the ring post. And Shane Eaton, he better get on his wheels and try to uh, interfere in that situation. And the dynamic dude himself checking on Steve Lane. Chris Gatlin, discretion being the better part of battle, not tying up with Rapata and Douglas two on one. Back into the ring goes Steve Lane. And Douglas now, say, get up, kid. You want to be a wrestler, huh? Douglas looks all the more reminiscent of former wrestling great Frank Morrell. Wait a minute. Going over the shoulder, oh, oh, into a diamond cutter on the knee. Tremendous maneuver from Big Bully Douglas. Lane into the corner, comes out, but got a drop oh. kick, full force right in the chest. That will take your breath away. And Brute Bernard the third himself, Big Bully Douglas, unorthodox pinball attempt, broke it up himself with a count of one. Was there a Brute Bernard the second? There had to be. Now, wait a minute, Rapata wanted the tag. Rapata wanted to get the pin, would not let Douglas get the pin. Oh, hang on a oh. second. It's that cradle small package, only a two count. Well, this Steve Lane, I'll give him credit. He's still fighting. Now he's going for the backslide crucifix. Rapata trying to sit down on it. Rapata spins around. I'll just dropped him. Lane didn't have the strength left. And planted the point of the elbow into the ribs of Steve Lane. Backs him into the rope. Shoots him across. Rapata up top. Oh. Drop kick. Perfectly executed. Rapata now asking Douglas if he wants some. Boy, these two guys are like two big dogs protecting their yard, and they're just playing with the, the little innocent kitten that has wandered into their path. That may be the most tortured metaphor I've ever heard in my life. I like what the tortured back... metaphors. <laughs> you like anything tortured. What a back body I drop. I sit next to you doing commentary, don't I? Well, that's torture enough for me. Into the center of the ring goes Steve Lane, and Big Bully Douglas taking it up top, and the big man's going to fly. Douglas, not normally an aerial man. Whoa! Oh. I shudder to think what that did to his spinal column. But now Lane has the opportunity to make the tag to his partner, Chris Gatlin. Can Lane get it together and tag in Chris Gatlin? Can sudden impact make a sudden impact on me, Inc.? Douglas, in incredible pain from he got that. It. Hey! He got that tag, but here we go. Douglas. Gatlin. Tags Douglas, tags Rapata, and Chris Gatlin clearing the ring of the ink. Rapata from behind. Well, Gatlin, that didn't last long. That was a brief flurry, but Douglas and Rapata using the superior size. Oh, wait a minute. Duck the double clothesline. Whoa, down goes Rapata. Down Ooh. goes Douglas. And sudden impact. Double drop kick for Douglas, too. Backs him into the corner. Rapata tied up in one corner. Douglas hemmed up in the other. Double corner mount by sudden impact, gonna rain him down on me, Inc. The, re the referee has lost complete control of the contest, and sudden impact is making an impact on, on me, Incorporated. And now, wait a minute, oh, Ooh. together. It's like two big freight trains. Wait a minute, Sin's up on the apron. She's got the referee's attention, double sunset flip. What the hell's going on here? One, two, wait a second. Shane Eden, what is what Shane that? Eden? Oh, what in the drop, world? Double drop kick to his own man. He he hit the double drop kick on Sudden Impact. What is Shane Eaton? No! Well, that surprises me. I like it, but it surprises me. Shane Eaton came to the ring with Sudden Impact, and as they hit the double, oh, I don't like the looks of this. I don't like the looks of this at all. Wait a minute, Shane no, Eaton and Rapata, on. high five. Yeah, I love to see People settle their differences. I love to see people that used to hate each other making friends with each other. Oh, that is awful. Sudden impact. Chris There's Gatlin. not enough love in the world. Can't we all just get along? Oh, that's ridiculous. Shane Eaton has stabbed. Sudden impact in the back. And me ain't gets the dupe. Scott Hudson, Jim Cornette, ringside. USA Wrestling in Nashville, Tennessee. Scotty Saber and Steve Sharp going to tie it up. And of course, the loudmouth Derek Flair at ringside with Steve Sharp. Now, what, what do you, you got to be insulting like that for? Talk, talk about this great athlete that Derek Flair has brought to USA Wrestling. Steve Sharp, this guy, I know him well. He's a monster. He's an animal. He will. I know Scotty Sabre well, as a matter of fact, too. He's a great young kid. He's exciting. Needs a new haircut. Different story. 
But Steve Sharp is going to chew this kid up and spit him out right here tonight. Hang on a second. Scotty Sabre is not right out of a wrestling school somewhere in a backyard. The guy knows what he's doing. Just like that. Hip toss, arm drag on Steve Sharp. Drop kick. Take notes, Derek Flair. That's how you wrestle the match. Look who's standing in the ring right now. Well, Sabre right now is on the offensive. I'll give him that. But Steve Sharp, he doesn't rely on arm drags and drop kicks. You can see him. He's huge. He's powerful. He's massive. And he's got a mean streak a mile wide. Look at that. Look. Oh, he just pop faced Sabre. He ain't going to take that off his kid. And he got his eye dotted, but oh, right to the eye. Ooh. And a clothesline. And Steve Sharp, three time Missouri powerlifting champion. Well, right there shows it. Look at that gorilla press. 230 pounds of Scotty Sabre oh. straight up in the air and down. Steve Sharp is a monster. Well, that's nothing. Steve Sharp is on a 5 10 bench. Competition. Yeah, no but you, arch. you know, those barbells don't hit back. It's a whole lot easier to lift 510 pounds on a bar than it is 230 pounds of dead weight. You ever you tried that? to lift 230 pounds of dead weight? Of course you have. I you was carried, carried, of course. You carried not. your wife home from parties, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm stepping your line. Stepped on my line, but that's okay because I'll continue right on. Boy, when somebody talks to me, I just talk right over. That, that guy with that funny haircut, i tell you that earlier tonight. But anyway, right, oh, look at that, Derek Flair. There you go making fun of Derek Flair again. No, I'm not talking about Derek Flair. You know, Derek Flair has an important announcement he's going to make very soon, and I know what it is. What is it, then? I'm not going to tell you, but it's going to silence a lot of the critics that have been saying that he's not who and what he claims to be. So he's quitting the business. Oh, for heaven's sake, no. He's going to prove that he has the genes and the bloodline oh. to be a superstar here. Wait a minute, Sabre spinning heel kick, and Steve Sharp went down, but oh. not out. 20 mule team kick. Right in old home week, drops Scotty Saber and Steve Sharp, the former St. Louis Ram. Oh, wow. man, did Saber hit that turnbuckle. Boy, oh. he hit it so hard, it, it felt good when he hit the mat. Saber's brains have been scrambled. His running lights got dimmed by that one. I'll tell you what, one look at Steve Sharp, and you wonder why he even had to think about going through training. But he did at the hands of seven-time world heavyweight champion Harley Race. And now, see, did you see Scotty Sabre try to grab Derek Flair and mess up Derek's hair? He was grabbing his nose and he couldn't miss. Oh, for heaven's sake. It's not, you know, it's not cool to make fun of other people's physical deformities, Scott Hudson. I've heard I'll that. have you know. All right, I'll, I'll make a note. Yeah, you, you better. Told me that before the show. Might come back to haunt you like it does other people. Sharp on top. No. Scotty Sabre kicked out at two. Referee Rudy Smith putting the count down. But Sabre got the shoulder up. Scotty Saber, I am very impressed by this athlete, but Steve Sharp has, except for a couple of the oh. pieces, just manhandled What a flying shoulder block. Leveled Scotty. Well, Sharp has a tremendous athletic background going back to when he was in high school. And as you said, he's trained under former seven-time world champion Harley Race, who, by the way, said that Steve Sharp is one of the toughest kids he's ever coached. And how fitting for a, a pupil of Harley Race's uh -oh. to be managed by oh. a member of the Flair family. Holy mackerel. A member of the Flair family. Sabre planted Steve Sharp face first with that, that face buster when Sharp went for the power bomb, and now Sabre on the top. Watch He's going Sabre. for a moonsault, and he nailed it. But the referee's not there. The referee is harassing and young Derek Flair. He is being distracted by this hook-nosed buffoon, Derek Flair. Who? Uh-oh, Sabre's had it. Sabre's had it. Yeah, he's about at it, because Steve Sharp's back on his feet. Wait a second. Turn around, Scotty. He doesn't see this one coming. Oh, man. Yep, Sabres had it all right. I'm glad he had it before that happened. At least he now knows what it's like. He'll never have it again. Scotty Saber trained, of course, by the Nightmare Danny Davis. He knows what he's doing inside that ring, too. Hang on a second. Single leg roll up. Can he hang on? No, he what? did. Hey, he what? did. Oh, oh, holy mackerel. Hang on. Home page one. Scotty Saber. What an upset. You got to be kidding me. That was the fastest count I've ever heard. Oh, that was a perfect count. I blame Derek Flair. Put his nose in the ring one too many times. There's going to be some splaining to do for Derek to Steve Sharp because Scotty Sabre has got the victory. Scott Hudson and Jim Cornette ringside. The gold is on the line. The North American Heavyweight Championship held by Chris Harris on the line against his good friend, the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm. What an opportunity to see classic one-on-one -on -one
sportsmanship wrestling here. Two good friends going for the gold in USA Wrestling. Yeah, well, you know what you're really going to see, don't you? What? Well, first, you're going to see how fickle the wrestling fans are here in Nashville because they're already having to pick sides who they're going to cheer for, and they're going to drop one of these guys sooner or later like a bad habit. And secondly, you're going to see the fine art of backstabbing honed to crystal clear perfection because one of these guys with the gold on the line, I know, has a character flaw, and he's going to exploit it. Well, they would have read your book, I guess, if they pulled that off. Well, you know the old Tennessee handshake. Oh, boy. You're going to see that in this match. One of these guys, I predict, is stabbing the other one in the back because there are no true sportsmen. If it's professional, if there's money on the line, then that means that you're going to do what it takes to win. That's what I would do. You wouldn't do well, that because you've never won. That's correct. I'm, not, I'm an announcer, not an, not an athlete, not a professional wrestler. Oh, you've never won $2 on a scratch-off lottery. Are you kidding, Hudson? Actually, I won 2 bucks last week. Well, in that case, I'm glad you have two, because that way you can poop on one, cover it up with the other one. Did you buy the entire Milton Burl joke book or just that page? Oh, for heaven's sake, don't speak bad about Uncle Milty. Man's right, dead now. He, Wait. Was dead, he was dead in 1958. Oh, come on. Into the ropes. Wait a oh. minute. Down goes James Storm. Chris Harris, step over into the ropes. Chris, wow! Chris Harris, Japanese arm drag takedown by James Storm, and the Wildcat hit with the thud in center ring. Well, remember this, Harris as the North American champion, uh, he's got the easier part in this uh, match because Storm, the burden of proof is on him. He has to beat Harris or make Harris submit to be the champion. All Harris has to do is not get pinned or not submit. Is that your way of saying that James Storm has everything to gain and nothing to lose? I'm saying that Chris Harris would be smart. There's a number of ways a champion can get out of a match without losing the title. And if Harris is smart, he'll do just that. Look at the reverse monkey flip. And James Storm, the Tennessee Cowboy, hit with an equally resounding thud. And both men really showing a lot of sportsmanship, but a lot of competitiveness in this matchup so far. The goal's on the line. You do throw friendship out the window, but you don't throw ethics, principles, and morals out oh, the window Oh, come on, either. come on. You know what the OJ said. They'll smile in your face all the time. They're trying to take your place, and that's what Storm is trying to do to Chris Harris. OJ Simpson said that? Oh, not, no, the, the OJs, not the OJ. Well, you know what I mean. Side For heaven's sake, yeah, you got as much soul as my shoe. Nice hip toss. Field throw, rather, by the North American champion side. A headlock takeover by Chris Harris and the Wildcat back in control. Just remember, Scott Hudson, in the words of the immortal philosopher Ian Anderson, he yes. who made kittens put snakes in the grass. Remember that. Was he sitting on a park bench, snot running down his nose? Playing a flute. We remember what happened over the last couple of months with that North American title, Chris Harris and the living legend Larry Zabisco. Oh, wait a minute, Storm now going for the backslide, but Harris oh. sat down on him. Storm over, goes into a small package. Inside cradle and a two count and almost a new champion there. And you saw James Storm. He wasn't casting aspersions the way of Chris Harris. He was showing him exactly how close it was to a three count. I think he was showing him exactly how long it was. At least that's what the, uh, the hurricane girls that brought Chris Harris to the ring told me. You haven't spoken to them and I've seen you try. I spoke to them, they just wouldn't speak to me. It's their loss. Well, they spoke to you with Everybody a Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Oh, no, they don't. Side headlock takeover by Chris Harris. Referee Rudy Smith checking in there to see if James Storm shoulders the button out. Nice escape and reversal counter. Whoa! The head scissors. James Storm back over into a side headlock on the North American champion. Storm got that roll on the hip lock, used the leverage. Harris never got a chance to get to his feet and get the base before Storm had hooked him over again. Now Harris. Goes to that head scissors. And both these guys, they're, they're in such good shape. Got to give them that. They're going to try to wear each other down. And uh, that way, they neutralize the cardio advantage either one of them might have. Oh, football kick right to the chest. That'll, that'll shake the heart up and make the liver quiver. Duck the clothesline. Over the top goes Chris Harris, the North American champion. Dumped unceremoniously outside to the arena floor here in Nashville, Tennessee, at the Mecca. The Fairgrounds Arena. James Storm trying to wrest the North American title from around the chiseled waist of Chris Harris. And of course, if he does, then you know the people are naturally going to turn here in Nashville. They're going to turn on James Storm because everybody likes the underdog. Nobody likes the guy that's on uh -oh, top. Uh-oh, uh tempers. Temper, temper, boys. Oh, wait a second. Side headlock now by James Storm. Backs him in, shoots him across. Chris Harris waits on him. Oh! 
stiff kick in the chest. Back body drop and Storm all the way outside. Over the top and to the floor, he hit that concrete hard. You heard the smack of the flesh meet the concrete from back here. And now Chris Harris stands in the ring. The referee, Rudy Kazuti, making the count. Rudy Smith, uh, who is Rudy Kazuti? He changed it when he came over to Ellis Island. Ellis Island? Chris Harris. You remember Cowboy about Bob? James, Cowboy Bill, back up what? to the ring apron. Uh-oh, hang on a second. James Storm and Chris Harris, tempers flaring here between the two friends. Oh, man, oh, wait a go. minute, there we go. Uh, now we got a Donnie Brook. I figured one was scared and the other was glad of it, but now we're going to see a fight. Somebody's oh, going to get their this. hands dirty. Throw the friendship out the window. The goal has taken over. Oh, oh what a thefts press from Chris Harris, just like the late, great Luthez used to do it. But I'll tell you, Luthez never threw that left hand like Harris is doing the southpaw, trying to retain that championship against the Cowboy oh. Flying Bulldog. Nailed it. Side press, no, and Storm kicked out at two, but just barely. Well, Storm is seeing his opportunity for the North American Heavyweight Championship slowly, but surely dwindling away as now Harris climbs to the top. Chris Harris, the North American champion. Gonna put the icing on the cake here. Storm doesn't see him. Wow! Oh, that's gonna do it. Lateral press, two, no! Storm kicked out. Boy, I tell you, now we're seeing some frustration written across the face of Harris. He's gonna be thinking, what have I gotta do to put this kid away? He has hit Storm with a couple of heavy bombs, and so far, Storm is still alive, but just barely. And James Storm is thinking, I'm still in this one. I've dodged the bullet so far. Can I hang on and possibly become North American champion? But Harris wants to hang on to the goal. Harris, uh-oh, doubled up, cut off by Storm. Oh, reversal, ooh, Savat kick, wow. oh, man! Boy, he just brought that one up under his chin. He kicked a field goal to James Storm on the North American champion. Harris may be out. Harris isn't moving. Storm got it. it. Two, no. Chris Harris must have regained consciousness between the two and three count and kicked out on instinct. I mean, James Storm put the spinning front kick into the jaw of the North American champion. Kicked now, his lights out. Do you hear the fans are starting to pick sides just like I said they would? And now, wait a minute, reversal there. Harris trying to stop this freight train as James Storm. Uh -oh. Storm, look at this, he hung on. Skin the cat back in. That takes a real athlete. James Storm, momentum on his oh. side. Head scissors take over. The North American champion, Chris Harris, inverted the atomic drop. Storm follows up with the clothesline. Can he do it? Can Storm win the goal? Two, no. Oh, now you're seeing Storm get a little frustrated. Storm thought he might have surprised Harris there but he couldn't make it stick for the three count. Now Storm's gotta be wondering what else he's gonna have to pull out of his bag of tricks. Well, I tell you what, this thing's a scorcher and the fans here are starting to get rowdy. They're starting to come alive in this contest. James Storm and Chris Harris, what a contest we've seen here in Nashville. Up top, whoa, nice Rana, standing Rana. From Storm, two count only, a two count that time on the North American champion and Chris Harris seeing exactly the same view that James Storm saw earlier. Dodging bullets left and right, desperately clinging to the North American title. But this time, the, the challenger, James Storm, is the one on his feet. Chris Harris, the champion, on his knees. And fatigue has got to be playing a, a factor, at least partially in this contest. Wait a minute, look at Storm in the flurry. You can tell the punches don't have the steam they used to. These guys are tired, but oh, wait a minute. Oh, my God. Oh, Storm jumped over the top. Harris tried the spear, and he caught the referee. The referee, Rudy Smith, doing everything he can to stay out of the way, but Chris Harris just speared the life out of the referee. James Storm sidestepped it. Now James Storm is up top. Whoa. Harris, oh, man. Harris saw him out of the corner of his eye. He knew he only had a second or two to react before Storm came off that top. He couldn't reach Storm, so he did the next best thing. Cut him off on the top turnbuckle. The referee, Rudy Smith, is still out. We may need to get some assistance for this official. He is unconscious. I'm wondering if anybody in the locker room area is paying any attention, because I know there's another referee back there somewhere. Meanwhile, Harris and Storm, they don't care if they got a referee or not. This, I told you, tempers were going to flare. And both these guys, the competitive spirit that they have, they're determined one of these guys is going to win this thing. Uh-oh. Chris Harris setting James Storm 
for a superplex back into the ring. Oh, man, if he hits this, you can count to 300. That's oh. going to do it. Well, you'll have to count to 300 because the referee's not going to. Oh, that's a great point. The referee is still unconscious. Both Wait a minute. Men. All three men are down. Storm down, Harris down, the referee down. Who is going to be first up? Let's hope the... Oh, wait a minute, oh, wait Harris. A minute. One, two, three. That's it. Chris no, Harris. that's not it because you don't have a referee's title, license. But the referee is unconscious from that spear earlier on. James Storm is out, but so is the referee. Chris Harris now realize what's happened. He Whoa. hit the superplex on Storm. Harris is looking around. Harris doesn't know what to do. The referee's not moving. Storm not moving. Oh, wait, is Harris, I, I thought he was going to the referee, but he's going to the top again. Chris Harris takes it to the very top of the Mecca in Nashville. James Storm thrown in the center of the ring. The coup de grace. Oh! That's it. Elbow drop from the top. The referee is oh. still out. Harris, oxygen deprivation, I think, is playing a part here. Harris didn't wake the referee up. Wait a minute. Here's the other ref. One, two. No! No, my God! Kurt Heron, the other referee, hit the ring, and James Storm kicked out at two and nine tenths. Everyone in the building thought it was over. Can you believe that Storm's chances at the North American title are still alive? I didn't know James Storm was even punching. Referee Rudy Smith is out, the second referee into the ring, and we're gonna keep going. North American title at stake. Chris Harris and the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm. Well, I'll tell you, Harris inadvertently may have won this match for himself when he speared oh. that referee. Oh, wait a minute. Urinagi attempt, back elbow escape by Storm. Up top, escape one more time by Storm. Back into the corner, Chris Harris. Ooh. Oh, fought one right in the jaw. Now Storm up on the ropes. Harris charges, but he's blocked. Wait a minute, Storm, a second effort. He's got a, a second win. Oh! oh. The diamond cutter from the corner. Back press, two. Oh my God, Storm kicked out again. And Harris is getting frantic. Storm is kicking out on instinct alone, but Harris, I think he is, he is certainly getting frustrated here. What's it gonna take for one of these men to be held down for a three count? Neither man just has it in their system to lose this matchup. Harris, up top. The North American champion, Perch Ty. Missed the elbow. Can you believe it? Storm got out of the way. He was playing possum on that one. And now Harris has, has injured himself, and Storm trying to pull himself back to his feet. Oh. Super kick. Good Lord. Almost decapitated him. Back press. Two. No. So oh, now. to a three count, and Chris Harris. It's just not in their psyche to think about losing this match. There's an hour time limit. We may go the full hour. Look at Storm cocking up, cocking up the super kick again. Storm has got to keep focused. He has got the momentum in his corner. Harris, oh, wait a minute. Harris caught the foot. He certainly did. Storm ducks a clothesline. No! Oh, my God, now goes the referee. Harris, this time, ducked the super kick of James Storm, and referee Kurt Heron is un. Conscious. What is this open season on the zebras? It might as well be. They've hit the limit in this one. Yurinagi nailed it. That's it. No, it's not it because once again we got the same problem. There's no referee to make the count. Wait a minute, who's Prince Justice? Prince There's Justice? What on earth is Prince Prince Justice is in the ring? No! Not after the oh, oh. Man. Good night. He just splashed the back of Harris who was on top of Storm. Both guys rib cages, I'm sure, took the punishment. And now Prince Justice standing over the two fallen competitors. What the, the hell is Justice trying to do here? He's taken the... What is Justice? He just put James Storm on top of Chris Harris. Now, pardon me for being ignorant, but I don't think Storm asked for the help. I don't think Storm wanted the help. I don't think Storm knows about it. The referee, oh my God, no, no, no! Well, I'll be bamboozled. Chris Harris kicked out at two and a half. Referee Rudy Smith awoken by Prince Justice, awoken? who inexplicably. Oh, wait a minute, Justice now getting a chair. Maybe he's mad at Rudy Kazuti. And who? Oh, wait a minute, look at, my God, 
Burt Prentice Burt just Prentice. traveled to the ringside area. Prentice is hanging on Justice's leg. Burt Prentice, the owner of USA Wrestling, has seen enough and Prince Justice. What is he doing out here? He's telling him in his own promoter-type fashion to get the hell back to the dressing room. Oh, wait a second. He... Good night, Prentice just leveled Prince Justice. Well, Burt does have a low center of gravity. That's true. Prince Justice sent to the showers by Burt Prentice. Wait a minute, this match still goes on, Scott. And now, wait a minute, Harris has the chair that Prince Justice had slid into the ring. And he may have been sliding it into the ring to aid James Storm. He certainly put Storm on top of Harris earlier on after breaking up that what, What's going attack. through Harris's mind? Does he think that Storm had something to do with Justice coming in? Who knows? Swing and a miss. Storm oh comes my in God. his chair. Oh, my God. Sidekick, chair. There's the one, two, and three. Got it. My God, James Storm is the new North American champion. The Tennessee Cowboy. Oh, there are so many unanswered questions here. What is the involvement of Prince Justice? What? is going to be the official decision. What is the name of Burt Prentice's bowling league? James Storm, for all intents and purposes, looks like he has won the North American heavyweight title. Burt Prentice is in the ring. Maybe he will clarify what is going on. He's holding the championship belt. Well, obviously, Burt Prentice wants to award the championship to the new champion. The Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm. But I'll tell you, what a heck of a, there was, there was really no loser in that match. Both guys put on a, a heck of an exhibition of their, their science and their knowledge. But in the end, the intervention was just, was just too much. Put it down in the history books. That's a classic. James Storm has defeated Chris Harris to become the North American champion. Wow. And now, Storm thanking and congratulating promoter Burt Prentice, who, who's still out. Wait, what the hell is going on here? Are what we, the, the hell is that? Are we on the, are we, we're still on the air. Burt Prentice, my God, the owner of the group has attacked the North American champion. What in the world? He's got that chair. No. Oh, he just smacked James Storm again. How can he, how can he justify this? How can he explain this? What the what hell is going, going on? What's going on Burt Prentice? He's, he's, he's flipped. Are we, are we still on the air? Who, I don't know. Are we on the air? Burt Prentice, the owner of you, of, we're gonna go, we're not, we're gonna keep going like we're still on. I assume we are. Prentice has attacked the new, Wait, there's Harris. There's Harris pulling Burt Prentice off the guy that just beat him for the title. What has happened? Burt Prentice presented the title to James Storm, who I still have questions about. And now, what is it? He's beaten Prentice with his again. shoe. That's his bowling shoe. He has beaten James Storm with his bowling shoe. Chris, get Burt out of there. Come on. What in the world is going through the mind of Burt Prentice? I'm even shocked, and I'm usually not shocked at people's devious and underhanded behavior. Burt Prentice, you are the most devious and underhanded man I've met in my life. Well, now Harris putting the North American Championship belt on the prone, fallen form of James Storm. What and Harris happened? is left, and Prentice, wait a minute, Harris oh off the top God. with an elbow. What now? Jesus, Harris, is this a full moon? Chris Harris. Please, God, no, Chris Harris has attacked James Storm. Tell me Harris isn't aligned with Burt Prentice. Oh, well, no. We're going to need to review a tape, and Burt's going to need a couple of dancing lessons. And a new hip. James Storm is your new champion. I don't know what the involvement of Prince Justice means. I don't know what type of allegiance Burt Prentice has with Chris Harris. We have got so many unanswered questions after this one. Just shocking. Shall, wait a minute. No, Harris come going on. back up. Harris Chris. back up on the top rope. And my God, like come on, Chris. Macho Man, Randy Savage-like elbow. 
Somebody get Chris Harris out of the ring. He is a disgrace. Well, he doesn't have to worry about being fined by the promoter. It's a good point. Chris Harris, please. Ladies and gentlemen, there is your new North American champion, James oh, Storm. That's unbelievable. Oh, my God. I'm Joey Styles. Vince McMahon and the WWF don't want you to know what I know. I have secret sources inside the WWF locker room and inside the WWF offices. I have all the news that you're not supposed to know. Plus, all the news on your favorite local wrestling promotions. Call the number on your screen now. Scott Hudson and Jim Cornette ringside, USA Wrestling here in Nashville, Tennessee. Buff Daddy Bagwell and Grandmaster Sexy Brian Christopher to square off in single competition. And Buff Daddy has already made lots of friends here at the Mecca, Jim. Well, yeah, you know, he came out here and, and I, I think he had a good valid point that uh, Nashville smells like ass. And uh, that's basically what he said. I would agree with it. And he sprayed some cologne, some deodorant, some aftershave, and he even sprayed the referee's hands before he searched him for illegal, illegal objects. So I, I think Bagwell already has, has tried to improve the city of Nashville somewhat. You, and you think it improves Nashville to bring that porky pig wannabe Ronnie P. Gossett to the ringside hey, area? Ronnie P. Gossett's a legend in this business. I asked He's him earlier. He, as a matter of fact, he has a good short trip wrestling territory for sale if you'd like to get in on that, Scott. Uh, pass. Pass on. Will he take a check? Oh, he'll take anything. He'll take everything, as a matter of fact. Over the top goes Buff Daddy. And Grandmaster takes Buff Daddy to the arena floor. Ronnie P. Gossett, for some reason, will administer CPR. Oh, wait a minute. The, the entire front row is getting a whiff of uh, Ronnie Gossett's uh, bodily uh, aroma what? there. Hang on, yeah. Holy mackerel, and Bagwell is, he's laid out colder than a banker's heart. Gossett is wheelbarrowing Bagwell back around the I beg side. your pardon. Wheelbarrowing. You know, he's pulling him along like, you know, I, I know. Let's, that way let's, he can let's, revive him with a little mouth-to-mouth -mouth, uh, recuperation. Leave, leave that lay there. right where it is. A little mouth-to-mouth -mouth recuperation would give Bagwell the, the charge that he needs to complete this match. I bet. You're gonna charge him up, you gotta plug him in, I guess. Well, there you go. Ronnie's the man to do the plugging, I'll tell you that. He is a he's a great motivator of talent. Yes, he is. Always behind a man, moving him forward. Okay. Always pushing him. Always going for the top, the peak. Ronnie, Ronnie Gossett, I look up to Ronnie Gossett. I'm telling you, I joined his well, fan you, club when I was a You and everybody boy. else. Of course, when I was a big boy, I had to get out of it because the age limit was 14, That's but nevertheless. Right. You want to move on to page two of those? This is going oh. for it. I'm narrow casting here, ladies and gentlemen. And right now, Christopher and Bagwell attempting the uh, to psych each other out, playing mind games. Both men about equal when it comes to experience in this great sport. Buff Bagwell with a good bit of a weight advantage, but Brian Christopher you got to give him the intangible. Oh, wait a minute. Back. Whoa! Well, he flexed the wrong muscle. That's an intangible. He flexed his biceps, and his love muscle got the punishment. Yahoo is who? Is what? You know Russell. Russell, the love muscle. Uh-oh, look at Bagwell reversing on Brian, doubling him up in the corner. And Grandmaster sent across the ring to the other turnbuckle. Buff Daddy charges, and nobody home. Brian Christopher rolls him up. Hands oh, no! Up. Oh! oh, my God! We're eating at Denny's because there's the moons over my hammy. I don't think Bagwell realizes that his best days are behind him. Oh, no. Good night, nurse. Well, we can go ahead and say anything we want to for the next couple of seconds, Scott, because I don't think that'll air. It is not raining inside. That is Ronnie Gossett drool at the ringside area. Gossett is a fine judge of, uh, of talented men, of, of talented wrestlers. And? And he has picked Bagwell because he knows I've Bagwell heard that. can deliver the goods. I've heard that too. And that's what he's, what he's gonna try to do in this match by defeating Brian Christopher. <laughs> Brian Christopher and Buff Bagwell certainly giving the people their money's worth, and I think Buff Bagwell may be uh, Stepping in high cotton in this one, if you know what I'm saying. 
No, actually, I don't really know what you're saying because that analogy doesn't really fit the subject. However, did you see how he was walking across the ring? Well, I tried not to look, but wait a minute. Oh, Brian Christopher just poured water on poor old Ronnie P. Gossett. Well, it's about time he hasn't had a bath since the Ford administration. Ronnie's blind. He can't see with all that water in his eyes. Was it water or beer? I don't know, but Ronnie's a legend in this profession. He shouldn't be treated that way. Uh-oh. To, to have a man come up and spray that stuff right in Ronnie's eyes is just, just too much. Yeah, don't go for the eyes. Poor fella. Brian Christopher, you know, he's a little smart, Alex, what he is. He's got that Lawler streak in him. Uh-oh. And I think Bagwell's about to have a streak of something else in his shorts. Watch out, cover up Russell. Oh, how'd he do? A headbutt right to Russell. And buff daddy Bagwell having it handed to him, as it were, by Brian Christopher. Uh oh, oh, hang wait on. Wait, Christopher. Oh, oh but wait a minute, Ronnie Gossett had that had that deodorant, that aerosol spray deodorant. I think it was right guard sport extra dry powder fresh. And he just sprayed it in Christopher's eyes. He certainly did. And Brian Christopher, Grandmaster 6A, blinded not temporarily at the ringside area. He is grasping. And only by instinct has he found his way back to the ring apron. He still can't see, and Bagwell will take advantage. Brian Christopher sprayed with that deodorant. Glad it wasn't odor eaters. He would have disappeared. Ronnie Gossett, first time he's had deodorant in his hand in 14 years and sprays somebody else with it. Well, it's hard for him to get all the uh, surfaces and mud flaps and things that he has. Now Bagwell trying to explain to the referee what was going on, Brian Christopher's down. Brian Christopher sprayed directly in the eyes with that deodorant by Ronnie Gossett. Meanwhile, Buff Bagwell, what is Bagwell doing? Well, he's untying a knot in a bandana, it looks like to me. Possible good is that gonna do? Well, I don't know. Maybe he... Uh-oh, oh, that's what go. good it's going to do. Now choking the life out of Grandmaster 6A. Meanwhile, Gossett has the referee distracted. Well, now Bagwell's got in his pants. What's that? I said Bagwell's got in his... got the handkerchief or bandana in his pants. What do you think I'm saying? Well, I, I have no idea. You disgusting individual, you sick human being. You boil on the backside of wrestling, for heaven's sake, trying to... Hang on, Bagwell. Hooks the leg and only got a two count that time on Brian Christopher. I don't, like being, I don't like being insinuated. Bagwell's hey, hot at the referee, he should have counted. Wait a minute, Bagwell and the referee having a go at it, and Bagwell better know better than to talk or push the referee. That's 5,000 bucks right there. Well, you can buy the referee for five grand? No, it's a fine. Oh, wait a minute. They say these Gossett referees again. gotten more expensive lately. Gossett just tattooed Brian Christopher with that aerosol can. Bagwell is in firm control here. And it looks to me like Brian Christopher is groveling at the feet of the buffster. Oh! Now Bagwell with a right hand. Make it two, drops Grandmaster in the center of the ring. Christopher, he's weebling and wobbling, walking recklessly, attempting oh. to fall, and Dropped he did. It. Bagwell, side press, hooks the far leg. Only got a two count on Brian Christopher. And Buff Daddy Bagwell, ego getting in the way of what looked to have been a surefire victory there. And those don't come easy against Brian Christopher. Make no mistake about it. Bagwell sent Christopher into the buckle there. Christopher still trying to uncross his eyes. He has had a variety of punishment uh, provided for him courtesy of Buff who is the stuff, by the way, so I've heard. If you believe him, now just choking the life out of Brian Christopher's buff Bagwell. Well, that's it. That's what he says, Bagwell. Well, he, he usually means what he says, Scott. Since when? Since I said so. Only if his mother calls in first. Now, Judy's a wonderful woman. Oh, Bagwell, at the last second, Christopher managed to raise those feet. Boy, he just ate both of Brian Christopher's boots. From the soles up. And Buff Bagwell, all but out. Ronnie Gossett trying to charge on Bagwell, but Bagwell really got tattooed by Brian Christopher. Well, now Christopher 
trying to struggle back to his feet. Ronnie Gossett exhorting his man Bagwell on. Oh, wait a minute, blocked it. Block. Blocked it again, and Brian Christopher with right hands for Buff Bagwell. Ooh. Tattooing Buff Daddy. Backs him in, shoots Bagwell across. Buff Bagwell cut him off. Whoa! Oh, into Geary, into the back of the head. Nailed Buff, and watch the Grandmaster. Nailed him with a clothesline. Christopher's got his second win. Bagwell got to try to stop this guy because he can't let Christopher go too far. Running Bulldog drove Buff Bagwell directly, face first, right into the canvas. Brian Christopher follows through, pulls Buff back to a vertical base, backs him into the corner, sets him for the Bulldog. Oh! oh. Bagwell tried to slip out, but he couldn't get it all out of the way. Watch Two. Gossett oh, wait from the Gossett. outside. Well, Ronnie Gossett was trying to show the referee that Bagwell had, had yeah. slipped out of that cover, and sure. suddenly, blah, blah, blah. Wait a minute. It wasn't Ronnie's fault, is what I'm trying to say. Ronnie Gossett being manhandled by Brian Christopher. Well, he's trying to pull Ronnie into the, into the ring, but the best he's doing is pulling his shirt off. Oh, please don't. And my God, no. Speaking on behalf cover of all sighted Americans. The, cover the children's eyes. I saw Ronnie Gossett naked one time. Oh. I canceled my check to prevent blindness. Into the, into the ropes. DDT from Brian Christopher. This match still anybody's ball game, Scott. That may have been everything Brian had left. Bagwell back to his knees. Whoa, oh no! Basement drop kick. He attacked Ronnie P. I think he hit him in one of his chins. Well now, Christopher better keep his mind on Bagwell because he's got all he can say grace over in the ring. Now look at Christopher. Oh, he's, he's still concentrating on Gossett. Christopher, oh man! Stiff kick right in the gut. Ronnie's gonna roll all the way to Gallup. I think Christopher lost his shoe. No, there it is. Oh, he got stuck in some of the fat. Shoot, no, reversal by Bagwell. Christopher off the second rope. No, oh my oh. God! He nailed a referee right in between the groin and the taint. I think we're somewhere between Murfreesboro and Jefferson. Now Bagwell. The referee, Kurt Heron, just got deep six by Brian a, Christopher. There's been a rash of that lately. Bagwell plants Christopher high atop the ring. On the top turnbuckle, Bagwell follows him up. The referee, Kurt Heron, is out. Well, Bagwell's got the opportunity to put Christopher away. Wait a minute, Brian Christopher. Firing back with those right hands, Bagwell. Flew through the air, landed hard on the canvas. Uh-oh. Watch Brian putting on the go goggles. It might be time for the master to fly. Nailed oh. it. The referee is reviving. Kurt Heron back up. One. Oh, because oh, come on. Well, he got one. What is this? A mini series to be continued? Just count. Well, the referee got tattooed earlier on. That's all he had. I that's all he had in him was one count. I don't care what kind of tattoo he's got. The point is, he can Wait still get up. Wait a minute, that's Watch great. Bagwell. Whoa! The aerosol can, the deodorant didn't connect. Wait a minute. Brian's got it. Brian Christopher. Oh, oh boy! Boy, I tell you what, he hit him with that right guard. Three. That's it. Strong enough for a man, but made for a Bagwell. Brian Christopher with an aerosol can shot to the temple. Grandmaster Sexy has defeated Buff Daddy in Nashville. Two of the biggest stars in the history of wrestling collide Saturday night, June 1st, only at the Tennessee State Fairgrounds. Promoters said the match couldn't be signed. Never before have they even been in the same ring. Jerry the King Lawler against the American Dream. Dusty Rhodes, one night only. Nashville, Tennessee, Saturday, June 1st at the fairgrounds. You'll also see Brian Christopher take on Buff Bagwell. Ten big matches only at the fairgrounds. Lawler against Rhodes, June 1st. Not this one, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes and Jerry the King Lawler. Well, I'll tell you, Scott, this is the match they came to see here tonight. A near record crowd in Nashville to see the American Dream face the King for what I believe is the first time ever in either of these two men's careers they have ever faced each other in a single match. And when you think of the, the incredible competition that both these men have faced over the last 25 years in this sport, 
two of the leading individuals, two of the, the leading competitors in every federation over the last two decades. They have never met one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, in the ring. And talk about your titles, Dusty Rhodes, many time NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Jerry the King Lawler, many time USWA World Heavyweight Champion. And then go along with AWA World Heavyweight Champion, the CWA World Heavyweight Championship. Thank you very much. I could go back and I can recite Lawler's record like a book because I've been foiled in many times by Jerry the King Lawler. He has foiled many men that I've managed. Dusty Rhodes, same situation. I've been across the ring from both of these men, and all I can say, Scott, you never know what to expect. That's a great way to put it. The only thing consistent about these men is their inconsistency. They never give you the same look twice. Dusty Rhodes will pull a rabbit out of his hat. Dusty Rhodes has taken a beating and a pounding over his incredible career. He's got more injuries and places than most people have places. And Jerry the King Lawler has defeated some of the top names in the business as well, taking a lot of punishment, but he knows how to come back. Both these guys are gonna do their dead level best not to tarnish their reputations here tonight, and Lawler has the home field advantage. And talk about reputations. How about the fact that both men, the patriarchs of two great wrestling families, Jerry the King Lawler and his son, Brian Christopher, Dusty Rhodes and his son, do we call him Gold Dust or we call him Dustin Rhodes? Well, the fruit of his loins, if you will, kind of fell a little farther from the tree than most, but Dustin, now Gold Dust, still has the American Dream's blood running through his veins. But the men who started it all, Dusty Rhodes, Jerry the King Lawler, one on one here in Nashville. I came to see this match. Me too. I'm not going to kid you. I'd have paid good money to see this one. And oh, Jerry Lawler with the right hand. Well, fortunately, instead, the promoter's paying you good money, and I don't know why. Well, I got, I got, a, wife, I got a wife and kid, you know. That's not my fault. Well, that's not what the court said. Mandatory sterilization will work wonders. I live in Rhodes, Georgia. Rhodes took that right hand from Lawler. That may be the first time in his career that he's felt it. Now he knows what all the talk is about. With two men of this caliber in the ring, you might actually not notice at ringside the beautiful Miss Joni. I don't see how you could miss her. Accompanying the King Jerry Lawler to the ring. And she has been known to get her, to get physically involved in these contests for her man as well. Well, but the list of guys in this industry that both these men have defeated in their careers, from Hulk Hogan to Ric Flair to Randy Savage, you can go down the list. Between the two of them, Jack Briscoe, someone just said in the crowd, between the two of them, they've gone through the entire list. And I cannot believe that we're seeing history made tonight in the first time they've ever met each other. That's hard to believe. Two men, and I don't think they are ashamed to say that are approaching 30 years in this great sport, have never once tied up in single competition until this very night. But, oh, wow. Nashville, Tennessee, and a right hand from Dusty Rhodes. And now Lawler's finding out what all the talk is about on that big right hand of Dusty Rhodes's. Thing looks like a small canned ham. And Jerry Lawler. Backed into the corner, Dusty Rhodes, of course, showing appropriate respect for the king. The man who was almost mayor of Memphis, Tennessee. Except for the other 11 candidates. Well, that's almost, that's closer than I got. Yeah, you know, the only thing that kept Lawler out of college was high school. Well, that's happened to a lot of us. Wait a minute now, Dusty, Dusty's a ring general, so is Lawler. It's so impossible to pick between the two of these guys. They're playing mind games now. They're trying to psych each other out. And now Rhodes going to the referee, trying to rattle Lawler that way. Lawler trying to hold his ground. Now we'll try one of little tie up. And do an arm bar, wrist lock by Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, and Jerry the King Lawler. And Dusty Rhodes has still got it. Look at the pain on the face of the King. And now that bionic elbow uh -oh. may be uncorked. A little shake, rattle, and roll in that elbow right to the, to the shoulder point of Jerry Lawler. Jerry Lawler, that left shoulder. I don't have to tell you how much pain that's in. Just look at the machinations of the King. He's trying to get everything back in alignment up there after that elbow from the American Dream. Do you see Dusty Rhodes making eyes at Miss Joni at ringside? That's risky business for the Dream. I'm seeing everybody in Nashville making eyes at Miss Joni, especially in that getup. Oh! Whoa! Dusty goes down at the hands of 
of Jerry the King Lawler. I feel like Howard Cosell's got down goes Dusty. Down goes Dusty. He got some free dental work from the King that time, Howard. And Dusty gonna regroup. But see, now Rhodes is in control because now he's dictating the pace. And as smart as he is, that's what he wants to do. He's gonna try to rattle Lawler, make Lawler anxious, try to get Lawler to step in and make a mistake by rushing. And that's exactly what the King does not want to do. Dusty Rhodes still at ringside, shaking loose the cobwebs, getting dangerously close to Miss Joni over there. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. minute. Well, she's getting dangerously close to him. She's getting in his face. I think she's making eyes at Dusty. I don't think so. You know, the American dream, the American dream was quite a ladies' man in his day. Really? But I understand Miss Joni, when Dusty was coming in, Miss Joni said, hey, cowboy, where's your horse? And Dusty said, it's between my legs and you're too ugly to ride it. Oh, come on. That one didn't work on Baby Doll in 1987. I liked it then. Oh, and Dusty opening up on Lawler. Shoots him in. Big back oh. body drop. Oh, Lawler up over and down high elevation with the backdrop. And now Dusty Rhodes closing in on the King. Good Lord. We are seeing a clash of the titans here. The importance of both these men in the, in the industry of professional wrestling cannot be underestimated. And now there's partisans among both sides of the crowd, some for Dusty, most for Lawler. Well, we are in Jerry Lawler's backyard, the volunteer state of Tennessee, and Dusty Rhodes, God love him, might be considered an interloper here in Nashville. An interloper? It's not interloper season, it's deer season. Interloper season. Oh, wait a minute, Dusty opening up one more time, Lawler into the ropes. Oh, Whoa. he caught the dream that time. That Down goes Dusty again. That right hand of the King has dropped every big name performer in this great sport, and Dusty Rhodes just the latest. Oh, look at Lawler, he's Please. ready. He's well, ready you to see go. Lawler, he's not waiting in after him, though. He's waiting for Dusty to get up. He doesn't want to close in on Rhodes. Rhodes may be playing possum. Lawler's smart enough to realize that. He knows what he's dealing with and how smart a man he's got in the ring with him. Dusty Rhodes claiming to referee Rudy Smith that Jerry the King Lawler used a closed fist. I think he did. Well, yeah, I have no argument with that. Did Lawler deny it? I didn't see it. Two titans of this great sport. When they write the history of wrestling, these two men will be in the preface. Make no mistake about it, we wouldn't be here without them. I think the only attendance records that Dusty didn't set were the ones that Lawler did. Oh, and the elbow. Into that left shoulder one more time. The elbow that the dream claim Miss Joni said she used to watch when she was a little girl. And now, wait a minute, he's got Lawler backed over those ropes oh, and the elbow, elbow again. Lawler backed into the corner. Oh, two master manipulators here, and now Rhodes choking Lawler. The King with his oxygen cut off. Lawler trying to, trying to fight out from underneath, but Rhodes has got him smothered in the corner and hiding the choke from the referee with his own body. That takes a lot. Now Jerry Lawler finally back to his feet. And Dusty stalking his man. Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, backs Lawler into the corner. Dusty Rhodes oh. with a knife edge chop right across the chest of the King. And there's that elbow into the crown of the cranium of Jerry the King Lawler. And the dream has staggered the King. Dusty Rhodes, of course, also a great tag team wrestler. Remember the, the teams, the Texas Outlaws with Dick Murdoch. The superpowers with Nikita Koloff, America's team with Magnum TA. How about the James boys? I'd rather forget that one. Full scoop and a slam in the center of the ring. Uh oh, oh, wait a minute. Dusty just noticed Miss Joni. Thought he was gonna ask her for her phone number. She is distracting. Oh, look at this, the dream. This is a new version of Dusty Rhodes. Well, Rhodes knew that he wasn't gonna be able to come in here and play by the rules and get a break with the hometown officiating. The hometown fans, right in Jerry Lawler's backyard, he knew he was gonna have to bend some rules. That's nothing new for the American dream. It's just that in normal circumstances, the fans are behind him. In this case, the partisans are mostly for the King Lawler. That's a great read, I agree with you. Jerry the King Lawler. Wait a minute, now there's a definite dusty chant developing here. 
against a Lawler chant from the other side of the building. We may have something breaking down here in the entire fairgrounds arena. Well, from the looks of it, if it does break loose, I'm betting on the Dusty side. And Dusty Rhodes, left hands across that left shoulder. Oh, and now right into the throat of Jerry the King Lawler. This definitely is a different American dream than we've seen. Well, Dusty Rhodes, I think, thinks that the uh, the winner takes the spoils, and the spoils in this case would be Joni, and I think he'd like to spoil Joni. I think all of us would. I think all of us could. Oh, look at this. Referee Rudy Kazuti Rudy trying Smith. to force, uh, yeah, whatever, trying to force the dream back. Lawler is on his, now he's on his feet. Barely. Oh! Cuts him off, one to the gut. Dusty Jerry looks like he's ready for the bunkhouse stampede. Oh, oh my God, there was Lawler. What a right hand shot from the American dream. Sent Lawler up and over all the way to the floor. Boy, he went ass over tea kettle on that one. And now Dusty, who looks like he's ready to compete in the bunkhouse stampede, if you will. <laughs> my God, he's, he's got cowboy boots on and those blue jeans. And he might even have spurs in his pockets. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. He's got, a, he's, got a, he's got a toolbox. That's the toolbox the ring crew uses to put this ring up before the show. Dusty Rhodes has got the toolbox. Oh! He just ran Lawler's head into it in public even. It was in the corner of that toolbox. Good God, now he's getting an Allen wrench. What's he doing? Now wait a minute, he's got, what is that? Is that a rope or a tie or a, a cable? Something like that. Some type of cable wrapped around the throat of Jerry the King Lawler and Dusty Rhodes. Using any means necessary to control Jerry the King Lawler here in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, now he's got the king on a leash, more or less. And Dusty Rhodes. You can see it in Dusty's eyes. Well, this has been brewing. This has been boiling. There's been bad feelings from afar between Rhodes and Lawler for years. Well, there's some good feelings right now between the Dream and uh, Miss Joni, looks like. I wonder if Dusty wants to show Joni the flip-flop and fly. I bet yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Uh -oh. oh, yeah. Hang he on. Children, please avert your eyes. Do not try this at home. Dusty, I think he's gonna get a phone number here. I think he's gonna get a number. I think uh -oh. that number's gonna be one wrap right across the throat. Lawler's got that cable that Dusty was choking him with. And now Lawler returning a favor. Man, he is choking the life out of Dusty. Dusty came too close to putting his hands on his woman. You don't put your hands on the King's woman. Well, now Lawler looked like he, looked like he thought better of that. He took the cable, oh wait a minute, he took the cable off Dusty's next week. Oh my he God! He threw that toolbox at him and missed, thank God. It didn't miss by inches. Dusty, oh! oh. The tray, the metal tray in the box. Now Dusty Rhodes has, has used that, it's coming to play on the, the spine of the king. Oh, this isn't turning into that classic battle of icons that we thought it would. This is just a regular old wrestling war. But. This is what we should have expected all along. Well, what do you expect when you get the American Dream and the King in the same place at the same time and they're ticked at each other? You're gonna have a fight. For the first time. There's the elbow again. Into the cranium. And now oh. Rhodes, oh, again the bionic elbow. Gotta wonder how much more Lawler can take, Scott. Not much. He's wobbling. Ooh. He hasn't got his sea legs at all. Well, that's a good thing, because he's on land. Jerry the King Lawler being manhandled by the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. Ooh. Oh, wait a minute, double fist down across each uh -oh. trapezius muscle. The but wait a minute, look at Lawler. He's kinging up. Jerry the King Lawler has had enough of the American Dream. Jerry Lawler's ready, down uh -oh. the strap. And my God, for the first time that I've ever seen, Dusty Rhodes is backing and begging, backing and begging, and here comes Lawler closing in with the right. Oh, and the King, oh, and Dusty. Into the eyes, Dusty. Roll through, feet on the ropes. The referee saw it. Boy, it was close, the referee, oh, Dusty thinks he won. No, the referee, Rudy Smith. Good job by the official, Dusty Rhodes, using the ropes for leverage against the King, and the referee didn't, wait a minute. 
Lawler, roll up. He's on the ropes. There's a three. Oh, come on. A what? referee error what? has caused the, the finish of the, the battle of the ages to be despoiled. Good for the goose, good for the gander. Dusty Rhodes tried to use the ropes for leverage. He got cut off. Jerry the King Lawler, in a word or a couple, got away with it. And Jerry the King Lawler, with the beautiful Miss Joni, wins this battle of icons in Nashville.